I was diagnosed with a subtype of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma in October 2011. I was warned by my oncologist that I would most probably lose all of my hair. Um, my hair actually started falling out five weeks into treatment, so just after my second cycle of chemo. Um, I had chemo once every three weeks. And um, I decided to buy a wig pretty early on because I had long hair uh, prior to receiving my diagnosis. And I had gone to this program called Look Good, Feel Good. It's offered in Canada to anyone, you know, who's going through chemo or who has a diagnosis of cancer. Um, and basically in the first hour, they provide you with like, you know, makeup and tell you how to do your makeup so you look normal. And um, in the second hour, there was um, a local business owner who owned a wig shop who came in and offered some tips on buying a wig. And one of the things that she said was, you know, you might want to go out and try different hairstyles and have fun, but um, for your first wig, like, look into something that mimics your natural hairstyle so that, you know, you feel normal. And this is something that I felt really helped me because um, initially when I lost all my hair, every time I looked in the mirror, I felt like it was a constant reminder that I was ill. And... I felt like I didn't look like myself, you know? So buying a wig that mimicked my normal hairstyle, it just perked me up every time I looked in the mirror. And it made me feel like I had a sense of control. Um, it gave me a sense of normalcy while there was all this chaos going on around and inside my body. Okay, so you've decided to buy a wig. Uh, now, where do you go to purchase it? There are several options that you have. Um, one is to go to your hospital, and if they have a large oncology ward, they're likely to have a wig shop as well. Um, a second option is to explore ethnic stores in the area. Um, the wigs in these stores are likely to be at the lower price end. Um, a third option is to go to places whose clientele are primarily um, people who suffer from alopecia or who are undergoing chemotherapy. I found that these places tended to have um, wigs at a higher price point. And depending on where you go to look for a wig, you will get different information on you know, what a good wig uh, consists of. So I found that, um, you know, at the end of the day, like these places are businesses, including the ones at the hospital, and they are trying to push their product um, and make sales. Um, so what I actually did when I bought my wig was I ordered it online off of VogueWigs.com. Um, the reason why I ordered it here and the reason why I liked this site was I thought that the prices were reasonable for what I was looking for, so wigs that were selling for like five hundred dollars in, um, like in in like local shops or in the hospital, I found for like three fifty online. And another thing is that um, a lot of the wigs that I was looking at had reviews, and um, people who had bought the wigs. Um, well, some of the people who have bought the wigs had taken pictures and uploaded them of, you know, themselves wearing the wigs. So you can get a better idea of, you know, what the wig looks like on. And you can get an idea of how it'll react to, like, the elements because people will, you know, write about it. Wigs can be classified uh, based on what fiber is used to create them. You have synthetic wigs, which are made... Um, using plastic polymer fibers, and then you have human hair wigs, which can be uh, sourced from different regions in the world. Um, I found that um, human hair wigs uh, with hair from Europe tend to be more expensive than those from China or Malaysia or India. And I think this has to do um, with the fact that a, a European hair is more uh, scarce when it comes to making wigs, and B, uh, European hair is um, it's more fine. And I guess maybe some people prefer that. Um, another way to classify the wigs is based on whether it has a lace front or not. So my first wig was a th synthetic John Reno wig, and it has a lace front. And basically, it's not like 
the the front the lace front uh it lies from temple to temple and it's not made from like french lace it's made from this hard um plastic lace and um it's meant to give the wig a more natural hairline because they say that each strand is individually like molded to the lace at the front so it looks like you know at the front it'll look like baby hair or whatever and um i personally found the lace to uh, be annoying after a few wears because I found that um, after the first wash the lace like the plastic it just got harder and it kind of irritated my skin and um, I also ended up cutting it a bit and I think that it didn't really help matters because it made the edge just a bit more jagged and harder. Um, one way that synthetic wigs differ from human hair wigs is that you're not allowed to get synthetic wigs near heat. They say the heat will actually ruin the fibers. And this includes heat sources such as, you know, uh, steam from a kettle or um, heat emanating from an oven. Uh, so you're meant to keep, you know, your wigs off if you're, you know, using these things. Also, you're not allowed to uh, blow dry or straighten or curl the wig. Um, so this means that whatever style your synthetic wig comes in is the style that it will retain throughout its wear. Um, human hair wigs can be, you know, cut, colored, uh, straightened, blow dried, um, but this can also be a downfall because they're more high maintenance than synthetic wigs. With this synthetic wig, you only have to wash it once every three to four weeks, whereas with a human hair wig, you have to wash it um, almost like you would wash your normal hair. Um, also with this synthetic wig, when you wash it, you can just wash it, put it on a wig stand, and let it dry overnight. Just comb it and you know spray some conditioning spray in it, and you're good to go. Whereas with um, a human hair wig, um, every time you wash it you have to blow dry and straighten it and you have to you know wash it and style it more frequently and this may seem okay if you're not undergoing therapy but when you're under chemo um and you know you're easily fatigued and you have you know chemo fog and nausea and vomiting and whatnot um this can be a big deal and it's just another unnecessary you know Thing that you have to do. So my first wig was a synthetic wig, um, primarily because it was low maintenance. So I just wanted to show you guys what my um, synthetic John Renner wig looks like. Um, I believe this is in like a dark chocolate brown color, and like I feel like it looks natural. Um, when I wore it, nobody could tell it was a wig. Um, in fact, sometimes people would be like, oh my god, you know, I forgot you were wearing a wig. Like, I forgot this was in your real hair. It looks so natural. And it looks a lot like what my hair looked like before. Um, the one issue that I did have with this wig, and that I've heard is an issue with all synthetic wigs, is that if we're going outside and if there's any sort of breeze, it will make the hair really frizzy and... It will clump it up in an unnatural way, in a way that um, normal human hair doesn't react. So that was one of the things I found really annoying. Um, and the way I combated this was to, um, you know, if I went out and it was windy, even in the slightest bit, I would just tie my hair to the side or I would I would braid it. Um, and if I, if I left it out and there was some wind, like... I always made sure that I had a brush and some conditioning spray in the car or in my bag um, just because it does clump up and frizz up in a weird fashion. So thank you for watching my video and um, let me know if there are any topics that you would like me to cover or if you have any questions.